there's probably probably any item, especially if you are someone who who tries to collect stuff that have stories or are useful, as Nora was talking about, you could pull off a shelf and and, and tell a story about it, which is pretty neat as I look around this room. But for me, the one that I'm I'm gonna talk about today, um, you know, like most people, I got married and two months after that, we moved to live in uh, we moved and lived in Japan for two years. Uh, all, all of you can relate to that, right? Um, and I, we moved there, my wife and I, speaking no Japanese, uh, knowing not a single other person who ever lived in Japan, or and not even knowing what apartment we were going to end up in. Um, it made it really challenging not to speak the language in, in Japan, but uh, we persevered for two years. And, and over those two years, you know, I, I, I got to know some of the people who worked at the school that I worked at. I was, I was a high school English teacher. And, um, you know, there's about 400 Japanese students, there's about 100 Japanese teachers, and there was one gaijin that was me, right, and uh, stuck out like a sore thumb. And there's probably about three people who spoke decent enough English to, to come in and chat with me day in and day out. Um, one of those was not the guy who was about my age who worked in the office, but he was super, uh, a super nice guy. We played soccer together and things like that. And about a year into my tenure there, he found out that I was going to a sumo match. Um, yeah, you know, he'd come and ask me what I, what I was doing on the weekend. He probably understood, you know, one word out of the 300 that I would say, just like I, that's how much I understood what he was saying. But when I said sumo, his eyes lit up and, uh, and, and on, I thought, all right, that's cool. Like he understood that. Right. Uh, I'm speaking a Japanese word, everyone. And, um, it, you know, and I went, I went with a bunch of friends. It was amazing. Uh, really cool, traditional Japanese experience. One of the things that I loved about being in Japan was, was going to the sumo event because I always love sports. And so about three weeks later, he, he comes up to the English teacher, um, the, my, one of my coworkers, one of the three who spoke good enough English to really kind of uh, be able to tell me something in depth. And, and she was like, hey, he, he really wants you to come down to the office. And, you know, as a as a kid, if you're in school and you're getting sent to the office, it's not not a good thing. So I'm like, uh, am I in trouble? Is this like, what's going on here? Uh, I was usually confused, but I was totally confused at this point. I walked down and and he has this he has something wrapped up for me and he hands it to me. I was like, all right, this is like a random Tuesday. Why am I getting a gift? And and the only thing that that he said was like sumo, like you like sumo. Right. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. And, and so I open it up and, and I'm there and it's, it's this. And I was like, okay. You know, I was like, this is a really nice gesture, but what is it? <laughs> you know, like, what does this mean? So it turns out um, he, he gave me this, this is a handprint of, of a person named Hakuho, which is the, the Michael Jordan of, of sumo, uh, the greatest, the greatest sumo um that ever existed. Uh, and he was retiring that year. And so, I, I mean, I found out this a little bit later, uh, I was touched by the gesture, but then I was, when, when the teacher came back to me and said, Hey, Trav, like, do, do you understand what this is? I'm like, well, that was really nice. Like, I can't, I can't believe he gave this to me. She goes, yeah. Imagine if you were, if there was a Japanese person who went to America, said they were going to a basketball game and you went and found a way to get them assigned basketball by Michael Jordan. And I was like, yeah. That's pretty amazing. And so I, I still didn't get the full story of how he got it. One of his friends worked at a sumo stable. I don't know. He called in all these favors to get me this. Um, and so, you know, from that moment on, uh, I just thought this is the nice, one of the nicest things that any human has ever done for me. Here's a guy who speaks probably five words in my language. I speak probably 15 in his language. We have these nonverbal, uh, this nonverbal relationship over two years that is that is nice, but hardly anything that's groundbreaking. And he thought enough of me and enough of me kind of having the courage to go to Japan to give me something like this. So, um, you know, I kept it uh, for years. And one of the things that the second part of the story that, that's, that's pretty awesome is that, you know, we moved around. Sorry, Marty, got one more. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, it, we moved around a lot. We were, we were travelers, you know, we didn't take much with us. And, and this just kind of kept finding itself in my life. Like I'm like, I cannot get rid of this. I, it wasn't framed at that point. It was just, it was kind of rolled up and I'm notoriously hard to get Christmas gifts for because I just don't really want anything. And if I do want it, I just buy it for myself. And so my wife complains about that. And in one time, I, 
you know, again, I would just say that, you know, when we have a house and, and we're settled in, like, I just, I want to be able to have this somewhere. And so one Christmas she came back, I, I don't even know how she dug through all our stuff, found this, um, got it framed with like professional museum uh, level glass and gave it to me. And so every time I look at it, I think there are two amazing people in my life who gave this to me. And uh, yeah, it just warms my heart.